Hey, Worship You. Welcome to our next round of Spontaneous and Prophetic Worship Interviews. I'm Joshua, and I'm here with Stephanie Gretzinger. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> Hi. Uh, say hello to our uh, Worship You students watching at home. Hi, Worship You students watching at home. Good job. Thank you. What a, what a just... I love people. Yeah. So. Faithful command. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're talking on the, t the topic of spontaneous worship. Yeah. And uh, in our environment and globally, you kind of have, you have a rap. You have a reputation. I'm a rapper. You are. You're a rapper with a W. We call you, we call you dub raps. We wrap it up. Yep. And, uh, but your reputation is one of, of being just a, a free flowing wild woman of worship <laughs> that just takes new ground in prophetic and spontaneous worship. And in this environment here at Bethel and then even out on tours and with our team, I feel like you've been just a huge pioneer really in, in helping us push into new realms and push into new discoveries of like what it could look like to get free and go into someplace new in worship. Hmm. What, what is it inside of you that just goes after these moments, steps past fear, mm. and goes after what you feel like God is doing in a moment? I'm just so hungry. I'm, I, th I think I, I just, the more you taste something that is good to you, the more you want to eat it. The more, you know, the, I think when I, the first time I started risking, I, I think I, I just knew there was more. He, he promised there was more. There had to be more than what was written. You know, there's something to be said for the promise that's, you know, he already gave us, but then also like the, this, this present moment, you know, um, this moment that we're breathing in right now, there's something for this moment that is, um, that only happens here and now. And so I think it made me hungry, like to experience what I, what I read, the, the person right here and now, mm. you know? Yeah. I'm like, if, if you are who you say you are, you have to be here right now. And I want to hear what you're saying and see what you're doing and be a part of it, get behind it, be right in the middle of it, you know? I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So. Really to be connected to him. Like, that's, that's what makes me, whether it's risky or scary, to know that I could know him better on the other side of it because I... I risked getting it wrong or what, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. People thinking I'm whatever, who cares? Like if it means being closer, then let's, let's do this. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. One thing, it, you kind <clears> of <throat> said something there that reminded me of something I've heard you say on tour and at church and in different places of this night in worship yeah. or this day in worship, this is the only time in eternity. Yes that this will exist. You know, even if it's your normal Sunday morning church, mm -hmm. from one week to the next, there's gonna be one person that's gone, one person that's new, yeah. a guest, an additional guest that comes or that. So that moment in time is the only, like, one service in all of eternity where it's gonna be that gathering of people at that point in time. Right. And it feels like that's so much of what the spontaneous moment is about, is about maximizing that one unique moment in time. Right. Can you right. just talk to us a little bit more about yeah. like, your feeling on that? I th um, one thing my dad was really good at growing up was um, he would talk to us about our future, but he would teach us in the moment. So I remember, <clears throat> I remember riding with him in the car years before I was allowed to drive. And I remember him just taking the moment like, oh, this is, this is a kingdom principle. I can teach this to her now. And I remember the day that he said to me, oh, he said, baby girl, wherever you look, that's where the car will go. Mm. So if you're looking over here, the car's gonna go off the road. If you're looking over here, you're gonna you know, go this way. If you keep your eyes fixed, then you'll move ahead. You know, you'll be able to see the signals, you can read the signs. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, he, you know, he said, it's, it's like this with God. It's like this with the choices in your life. And, um, <clears throat> He understood that it was one thing to tell me about what was coming. It was one thing to tell me the future, like, Jesus wins. Like, we know that this is a victorious ending. Um, he, he, he knew how to prophesy into my future, but if he didn't take this moment, mm. he knew that this was a crucial moment we would never get back. 
and teaching me in that moment was actually what helped me absorb it so that I wasn't hearing it for the first, really hearing it for the first time when I was 30 years old with the pressure and lights on the stage and now it's like I'm, I go into performance because mm -hmm. it was never about that. Yeah. It was about the presence of this moment, his presence in this moment. And my dad taught me that and I, it's always stuck with me so that I, I, so I learned to, in, that, in this present moment, be able to close my eyes. And we'll always be learning, right? Because he's, every moment is different, every day is new. And there's always something to learn. There's always more to know about him, which is why this is such an adventure. But I just remembered taking a deep breath, closing my eyes and saying, okay, I'm fixing my eyes on you. What are you doing? What do you look like? Who are you in this moment? Who do you want to be in, in the room in this moment? What does this group of people need? Because mm -hmm. a father knows, a good father knows how to meet their kid in that moment. Yeah. Not try to drag them into something they're not ready for. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's stuck with me my whole life. I'm still doing that. I'm still teaching that. Mm -hmm. You know? Wow. Does that make That's, sense? That does. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad is amazing. He's amazing. He really is. He, he is amazing. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that, that I've noticed about you is there's, there's some spontaneous songs that you sing it out for the first time, mm -hmm. and it's the first time you ever sang it. And then there's times where, oh, I think I've heard her sing that before, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. was still unplanned for that set. Right. Right. But it's not that. So what would you say to the people that are maybe the like spontaneity purists? They're like, <laughs> is that really, you know, if you're just regurgitating someone. I used to be one of those. Yeah. I, I mean, th there's a bit of snobbery in that, a bit of pride in that. I've been there before um, I, when I was younger and the zeal was a bit more than the wisdom. I think... Um, and, and I just think that you grow out of that. The more you press into the presence, it sort of, it falls off. Yeah. The, the more you know and the more you grow. Like if your heart is open to growing and you don't just think you have like, mm -hmm. you own the market on prophetic worship, which you don't. <laughs> it, it actually has nothing to, yeah. It, it has to do with your yes. It has nothing to do with, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but we all know that. I, th I think uh, to the pure, all things are pure. Mm -hmm. So um, there's never just one way because God is not boring, nor can he be figured out. Yeah. Um, and so I think that I learned that lots of times if God is speaking something, I, I think the spontaneous and the prophetic can be different. I, I do. I think they're different, but they can be one and the same. And when they're one and the same, I, I think that one and the same, I think that... Um, if the Lord is speaking something to us, it's often for the season that we're in. It, mm. There's often, just like when he gives us songs, like the songs that the church is singing all over the world, there's something on, there's a reason why everyone's singing them. Yeah. Because it's what God, it's what he's saying. It's what he's breathing on. Yeah. And whether that's our song or not, we should be singing it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if we wanna, so I think um, that's, that's what I knew. If, if God breathed on something and it felt like, Oh, this is this is something you're doing right now. I would be moved to sing it in multiple sets, mm. and I would sing it until like it left me, like until I felt like, oh, okay, that's like a complete assignment on that. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, that's really good. It, what it sounds like is mm. there is something that God is doing in a specific night, but then right. there's something that God's doing yeah. in a season. That's right. If He's doing it in a season, then it's still gonna whether you're singing mm -hmm. the same thing over and over again, yeah. it's still going to carry out that, that prophetic yeah. power and authority right. that it has on it. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. That's... And I think if we're open to hear, if we're open to, if we actually want to connect to his heart and we're not just looking to be the one who gets the word in the moment, mm. if, we're not, if we're not building our own kingdom, then we're actually willing to like yield. Like yeah. we yield to what he's doing. And, and so in the moment, it goes much farther that way. Yeah. Like the, the, it goes so much further than we could imagine. Like in this moment, I might get a word that I think is for this moment, but it, it rarely ever is. It, 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 it almost always goes beyond that. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's just what he does. Anyways. Yeah. What's something you would say, and I know there's no like one formula. Everyone has their own 
way that they approach spontaneous worship. Yeah. Which is why we're interviewing so many different worship leaders right. to get all the different perspectives. But what's something that you notice from someone who is maybe a younger worship leader, you know, maybe yeah. they're stepping onto you know, the stage, it's one of their first couple months or first couple years, you know, really in the, yeah, in the spotlight. It. Beautiful. Um, and you can speak to either the person who's really eager and hungry and maybe overly eager to do spontaneous worship, yeah. and they're just like, ah, I'm going for it. Or maybe the person who's like super shy and afraid to go after it. Totally. What's something that you see that you would just encourage people who are a little more green, a little more fresh at it, to, to keep in mind or just advice you would give? Some of those things, some of those things just have to work out with practice. Mm. I know we want a formula, and I know that we actually love to keep messes from happening. The truth is, you put those people, like, I would rather have someone who's zealous and eager any day, you know? And the tim like, e either, either, like, young person, young worshiper should be put with someone that'll cover them. Mm. Like, I... I love, 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 love leading worship with people who are newer at doing it. Whether they're young or they're just, they're new, it's something new they're doing in life. Like, I love it because I want, I want to make them room, yeah. give them a chance. And if it doesn't work, they took the risk. Yeah. God blesses that. Mm -hmm. God blesses it when we're willing to look foolish if we feel like it's what he's leading us to do. And sometimes I think he lets us do it and he lets it flop. Not just because it can't, it can't be about us. Yeah. Like our, our, our confidence can't rise or fall on like the response of the room. Yep. You know, like he has to, we have to build trust with him. So the risk is important. And it, even if it's just a little bit, I mean, like the Lord knows what it costs each person. Mm -hmm. You know, I was such a rules girl growing up. I was terrified to disappoint anyone. So it's actually quite miraculous that I see people who meet me now would never have guessed that I used to bite my tongue afraid to say something. Hmm. That th this is like, that's the, that's the transformational power of like walking with God, like being in his presence. And we become better versions of ourselves. We keep becoming more whole. And so I, I think for them, less than I would give them a formula, I would say lead with someone who makes you feel safe. Yes. See if you can find someone who will, stand next to you in a house when you're leading worship or on a stage, whatever it is, someone who's more seasoned, yeah. that's safe, like that gives you a chance to try. And if you feel like, I can't tell you how many times, um, it, like I had a, uh, Jeremy covered me mm -hmm. until I was ready to like explode on my own. And sometimes I would like burst out from underneath his wing and come back and, like, <laughs> you know, and, and he would let me and he would yeah. cover me. And I think, I think that's important. Like you need that. And then it was like we both knew the day when it was like, oh no, sister's gonna fly. Uh -huh. Sister's gonna fly right now, and this is what's happening. Yeah. And the it was like the confidence was just there. You yeah. know, it's like, and I think that it'll be there when it needs to be there. But it's gonna, it's always gonna involve risk. You know. Mm -hmm. So I think less than telling them what they need to do differently, like find someone who's safe, step out, take the chance. And if, and if you're like, oh, I think I might be done, you know, check in with them, make eye contact. If it, if it feels like you're done, then pull back. Yeah. And yay for you for trying, mm -hmm. you know? We have to be willing to let things flop to, if we want to go places we've never gone. Like we have to yeah. take the chance. Yes. You know? I think that's my answer. Okay. I'll, I approve. We'll accept Thank it. Thank you. Um, speaking of not flopping moments. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if we did? What if we picked a moment that was just like, <laughs> just a really just a really bad, bad just like flat moment. That could be actually You have my permission to, to do it and I could probably find you yeah. a number of them. I have run into a few of them that I'm like, I just turn off. I'm like, well, <laughs> that was what we had for the day. <laughs> well, what's funny about those moments too is like uh, we're our Ooh. own biggest fan and our own worst critic. And so we look at those like, oh my God, I totally flopped in that moment. But there's someone out there that goes, that's the moment that yeah. I needed. It. Like it's seasoned. It's where that, you are. We always grow. Yeah. I mean, I've heard Chris say that he you know, has books out. He doesn't even agree with some of the things that he wrote before. <laughs> it's just part of it. It's like you stick your neck out there and you do it because you love the Lord and you want more and you want you want to you know, sing the song worth singing. And, mm -hmm. and so you just, you try it out. Yeah. 
And we should find some of those. That would be actually a really That would be fun. fun. I don't well, know. I don't even know that the Lord would call it so much a flop as we would. I, I think he's a proud dad, and I think he's like, look at you. Look at you. Look at you. That, you know what? That was fine. You, you did so it. That was so good. You did Way it. Go. You stepped out. Some, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. <clears throat> I'm probably wrong. So let me try to phrase it as a question. Uh, <laughs> Maybe not. No, but, but on that point, like, I almost feel like the times that are flops, if you will, or whatever, where, where it doesn't like yeah. do whatever, is more, more often than not the times where we didn't take enough risk. You know, it's like you felt something and you kind of just you dipped your toes. You didn't follow it all the way through. Exactly. You didn't follow it all Friends. the way through. You just kind of dipped your toes and then you're like, oh, I must have missed it. It's like, no, actually you just didn't dive in and I'm, that's why you didn't swim in the waters. I'm, I'm careful about, I'm careful about teaching that because I know some people just want to take that and run with it and push mm -hmm. it until it beat a dead horse. But, but I will, but you know, that's part of learning. It's part mm -hmm. of learning too. Nope, that horse is not getting up, my friend. <laughs> it's time to move on. Yeah. But you have to learn that too. Yeah. How are you supposed to like, your sense, your senses supposed to submit to the Holy Spirit if you don't try them? Yep. You know, I, I 100%, I, I will almost always, 97% of the time, if you want a specific percentage. Yeah, no, I like that you've charted it. Um, yeah. We have a graph that we'll get for you later. I appreciate, yeah. um, yes. I, I would say 90, 90 some percent of the time, I will always err on pushing it too far. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. Because I don't mean like pushing it too long. It doesn't no. mean like singing it longer and longer and longer. It just means like really going for that thing that you yeah. really like. Yeah, and sometimes you do sing it too long and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Next time you won't, will you? No. <laughs> No. And at the end of the day, so you lost two minutes. Whatever. Like, not that big of a deal. People, like, it's not, it's not worth, like, quitting over it. No, it's not. Or, like, going and weeping and weeping and weeping for hours. Mm -mm. Just brush it off. You have to move on. You have to grow. To take feedback and grow. Yeah. Well, let's, let's give feedback to Stephanie. <laughs> yeah. Let's watch Stephanie lead out this moment. Oh, man. So this was... Uh, at worship school, 2017, mm -hmm. and this was the last day of school. After a long get? week, an exciting week. Long year. Uh, long year, yeah, we had United the two days beforehand. That, so good. That had fun. <sighs> I oh, wept, I wept. I know, such a blast. And then you and Jeremy led the final set of, of the school. And so this moment starts um, right after Sorry, right after Jeremy had finished leading on the shores. And it was a big yeah. dance, celebration yes. moment. Is there anything you want to say before we start well. watching um, it? Not that would matter until you've watched it, probably. Okay. Last day. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. So Stephanie, right here, you're singing, you know, when you don't see it, when you don't feel it. Yeah. What, what led you into like wanting to sing that over the crowd? Well, I could, I could feel, I think even at the beginning of the set, I could, I could feel, um, it was the last day of school of worship and everybody's like, nobody wants to go home, but everybody's ready to go home and they want so badly to like carry what they've caught and continue to feel what they're feeling, mm. you know? Yeah. I, I can't speak for everyone in the room, but that's the majority of what you sense in there. You can feel that. Yeah. I mean, it's like electric. They're so, they're so worshipful and so hungry and so happy, like so moved. And I think um, I could just feel, I could feel their anticipation and also the question in the room that's mm. like, I'm gonna leave tomorrow. And this is definitely not how things are at home. Yeah. You know, like this, this, oh, how did, how does this look at home feeling, you know? And I think I could, um, yeah, it felt very clear 
to prophesy to their spirits and to yeah. say when you, when you don't feel it, wow. you can't see it. So I, I love that. I love that you <clears throat> told us that because I was almost thinking that you were referring to in the present moment, if you're not feeling it, if you're not seeing it, like go for that, it. Yes, it, it, it was both. Right, but I love that, that but, you invited us into, that you were actually prophesying for like what they were about mm-hmm. to experience tomorrow mm-hmm. or about to experience next week. Because some of them already, there, there are people every time that stand there and they're literally just observers. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't feel what's happening. They're not connected to, they don't feel connected enough to actually feel what's going on in the room. Or maybe they're just really, they're wired really cerebrally. I mean, yeah. they're just very like here and they're watching everything and they're like, okay, I don't know how I feel because I'm not, I feel detached from my body and from my feelings. Um, and so I, it, it was both and, mm-hmm. you know, like you're, you're prophesying to all of the things. It yeah. was definitely, I mean, I remember feeling that in the moment too. Like some people are going. So I think it, w- it was for everyone. It yeah. was, it was for now and then. Yeah. As, as it is when, you know, if the Lord is leading you to sing something. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep watching. You gotta tell your soul. You want to cry? I'm like in it. I'm like, whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> tell me what, what you're feeling right now. What I feel is that it was also 2017 was the hardest year of my entire life. Hmm. And so, what I what I what I've was walking, I had some authority hmm. on that because I'm like, I'm walking through this and this will be my choice. Yeah that this will be my song in the night, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, no matter what, like, I don't actually need the, the you know, glory gooseys to say yes to you. Like, this is not, this, I am, yeah, I'm way too in for that, mm-hmm. you know, to know that this isn't butterflies every day. Yeah. This isn't butterflies every day, and it's not gonna be every time in that moment. Mm-hmm. And so you can feel, I mean, like, that's like some serious authority in the area of I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing through. Yeah. I'm gonna sing anyways. And, um, and, and, and that is when we do that and when everybody starts releasing their own song in that moment, they're actually, they're, they're building trust. It's like they're, they're like um, strengthening their stakes. It's like on the inside, they're literally, they're, they're taking ground because they're choosing to sing. And you could feel, you know, like just the weight, people are going through all kinds of stuff in that room. Yeah. And they're like, okay, how do I go? This is like a haven for me. How do I leave a haven? You know, and, and this is how. Yeah. This is how you do it. You sing through you. This is your choice. And I think, I mean, I was just feeling it takes time. Yeah. Like you don't have to just, it doesn't always come out with a scream. Sometimes it's like a whisper. Sometimes it's tears rolling down people's faces when they don't feel like it can make a sound to the Lord. Mm-hmm. He cares that we show up. It's like, it doesn't matter how weak our yes is. Yeah. Like he, he works with everything. Yeah. You know? 
So I just think it was that moment you just feel like the room rising because they're like, oh yeah, no, this is my choice. Mm. This isn't like what we yeah. did for you so that God would show up and be with you today. Yeah. This putting, is putting like, the weight back on yes. the uh, This is your this moment. This is how you do it. Yeah. This is how we do it. I didn't sing the lyrics on purpose because of licensing reasons. Same. And it's inappropriate. Yeah, truly. <laughs> do apologize. <clears throat> Back to serious business. <laughs> I'm very serious. About we it. are very serious. Yeah. It, it like you mentioned, this is a very personal season that you were going through. Yeah. Does it feel vulnerable on the stage in the moment doing that, or do you somehow <laughs> are you able to like detach? Like I mean, every time it's it's never not vulnerable. I'm. Yeah. I and like I said, I'm not. I was not wired. <laughs> We were meant for vulnerability, but I was not wired for it. Mm. So it's a, it's been a constant choice over the years. So this is like, I me, mean, it's my life's message now. Yeah. Like I, I I hope every time it's how you experience me because it's my choice mm -hmm. to like to show up this way. But I mean, it is. It's vulnerable every time, every yeah. time. And if it's not, then I know I'm not bringing. I know I'm not bringing all of me. Yeah. Where? <clears throat> it should feel a little bit unnerving. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Like vulnerability, that unnerving thing. How do you know when, because you're le still leading worship here, obviously, oh, totally. you've got a crowd of a thousand people. Yeah. So how do you, and I think you do this beautifully, so I don't think you're mm -hmm. overstepping any bounds here, but how do you, as a worship leader, how do I know when, oh, that's something that was just for me in my room. Yeah. Versus this is something for Yeah, room. yeah, yeah. You, you shouldn't come on the stage with that. Mm -hmm. It's part of you, so you bring it before the Lord, but you, you should be centered before you ever get up there to lead people. Mm. I didn't come up there swirly. Yeah. No, no. I had long been with the Lord and let him center me, mm -hmm. so that wasn't... Yeah. Mm -mm. We get swirly when we're not, when we're only, when that's the only time we've been in his presence is when we get on a stage with all those people. <laughs> that's when we're in trouble. Because his presence starts bringing up stuff that you haven't dealt with yet for the first time. And... Yeah. And you're having and, to deal with it in just, front of a whole crowd. And you're coming in like chilling out in your soul realm and you need all of them to be together. You yeah. need to be, pre to be present. It does, I th we've exalted like the spirit, mm -hmm. I think a lot in church for a lot of years, but we were supposed to be whole. Mm. And so that means we show up with our soul. It means we show up spirit, we show up body. Yeah. We bring all of it. Yep. And so to show up fully present, it means I, I got to stay connected before I'm ever up here. Mm. I'm, I'm like connected to the Lord, to my people. I was very centered when I got up. Very, that was a very confident, I was at ease. Yeah. Like it's vulnerable to like, it's vulnerable in the sense that, well, this could go one way or another. Sure. Might hit it, might miss, but this is what I feel like the Lord's doing. And so I do, I do go after it with confidence mm -hmm. because I've learned it's not, um, I don't fear the people in front of me anymore. Yeah. When I was young, I was afraid to not almost give them what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Don't care. I'll, <laughs> I'll lick about it. Yep. it. Literally, like my my validation, my identity isn't wrapped up in it at all anymore. Good. Right? But no, I think that's part clear, of it. We, we all have to work that out. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to be a part of it at some point where you're like, oh, okay. You mean like, so the smile of God is all that I'm actually looking for right now. Mm -hmm. Whew. It's actually way easier to get that than it is with people. So it really should just be the main deal anyways. So I think, so that was me really confident that I was, I felt really connected to God, to my people on the platform. Like we're, I mean, we're family. Like I felt, I was so connected and locked in that I didn't, there's no fear in love. Yeah. There's no fear in love. And once we like let that much love in, then the fear leaves. It's one thing to be nervous because you're excited, you're anticipating something, you know, just, but we don't need fear. Mm. Sometimes you do it afraid anyways, and that's where you build trust with the Lord. Yeah. But that, I don't know if that answers the question. That was, that was a really like dependent, confident mm -hmm. moment. Yeah, love it. Let's keep watching.
No, I was surprised by what I was seeing. <laughs> really? <laughs> he was like, that's that good. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, there, there are times when you hear the Lord saying something over and over, and then you sing it, and then there are times when you just, like, start singing it. You're like, oh, all right, we're going here. Let's do I love this. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it's like, oh, yeah. That's where the face is like, wow, Lord. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's so funny. Was that, well, you're about to go It wasn't in premeditated. A <clears throat> well, that's good to know. It wasn't premeditated. That wasn't premeditated. Here in a second, you're about to go into um, actually just talking to the audience about yeah. that concept of yeah. light on the inside. And we'll let, we'll let TV Stephanie explain that. But... <laughs> Great. <laughs> but real Stephanie, what I do want to hear is, you know, that concept actually played into your album that you just released, yes. Blackout, well, like, yeah. that song, all of that. Right. Is that a concept that you had been dwelling on and like revelating on f- for a time before this, or is this what sparked it? Well, okay. okay. So because because this has been like the craziest year of my life, <laughs> and one of the crazy things was that we found out my dad was dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, a few months before this. And so I was continuing, and, what, and I, when I felt that fear try to hit me, like that fear of death or the fear of like my, all, the, all the possible outcomes, um, I, I felt the Lord just, and I invited him into that moment. Anytime we feel fear, it's an invitation into intimacy. Like it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give way to this moment and invite you into it instead of just trying to nervously like shake off the fear and be busy. I'm gonna actually like, invite the father into this moment yeah. and, um, and father me through this. So anyways, so I had been living in that sort of season and because of everything going on with my, my dad and our family and f- friendships at large, I, I was asking, I've been asking the Lord to lead me into enlightenment. Mm. You know, not like some creepy outside of God thing, but right. like the light of the world, yeah. like the light of God, that he would, that I would be so, that he would so fill me with light that I wouldn't even have a shadow, that he would so fill me with light that there's not room for fear, Mm -hmm. that there's not room for living in that place. So it had been my prayer. And it was like, I had never, I don't think I'd ever sung it out before. Okay. I think that was the first time I ever sang that out. But I had been living with that for those months. Mm -hmm. But I I think I've learned now in this part of my life, I've um, learned that when, when you're wired, we're all wired a different way. So when God is working a message in us, it's never just for us. But what I found being wired e- even um, in a prophetic movement, as a prophetic person, what, whatever, you know, it's very rare that if he's making me into this message, that it's also not for someone else. Yeah. And my um, the thing is for me that I need the Lord. I, I need that to be my message first before I ever start yeah. preaching it. So I'd been living with that for a while, and it felt like, oh, I've, this is, this is for us. Yeah. Like this is, it's, it's our time to shine. It's our time to be bright. And I did after this start making my album. Yeah. After, yeah, we started working on it after this, but. Yeah. Well, it's. Oh, does that answer it? It does. Is absolutely. Okay. Um, that was a beautiful answer. Fuck, like I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm agreeing with myself. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yes. You're like, yes. Yep, yes, yep. yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I feel it, man. It's I feel it. Come so, back. Yeah. <laughs> what about just that. happened there? Yeah, what is it? You walked away, you're like, I'm done. And then you, no. Well, Not well, that. I I I pulled back to give space because I was like, okay, Lord, is that it? I, I just pulled back like, okay, Lord. And I put my pack back in because I realized I had been holding it the whole time without. I just couldn't be bothered. I only, I, I just wanted to stay connected. I was like, whatever. There's a pack in my hand. Oh, I'll put that back. You know. But your pack wasn't working because your batteries oh, were. Oh, it fell the out while I was dancing. It's like shattered. Right? Yeah, it was everywhere. Yeah. So I was just like, hmm. So I just put it back in my pocket. Well, and I just like, is that it? Is that it, Lord? And I just, I, I, I didn't have a thought to step back to the mic. I literally was just like, and we're, and we're here. That, so, yeah. that just sometimes that happens. Yeah. Oh. No, it felt like it happened to me more than I like thought, oh, maybe I should say this. Yeah. Definitely wasn't that. It was like, and before I know it, I'm moving to the mic and now I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> it was that kind of feeling. Yeah. Doesn't, it happens all the ways, but that was that moment. 
doesn't happen all the ways. Yelling at him in tongues. <laughs> I love it. So what? I love it. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love it. You got some cool hand motions going. <laughs> which I'm into. Uh, you did one of these, one of these Hands. dudes. Like you did that. Yeah. Just real quick. It was, it was, yeah. it was hard to see from prophetic the camera angle. Prophetic acts, man. And then this. Yeah. Tell us because that's a part of the prophetic this is, song this is or a whatever. Very, this is a very detailed interview. That no, this is good. This is probably. I hope. <laughs> I hope it's really helpful for people. It's also fun to go back and just be in that moment because I can feel it all over again. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's... I, it's, it's an intentional release. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an intentional release. I also, as a mother, I know what I've been stewarding and learning, and I don't need to tell the whole room that, but no, I don't. feel myself on purpose releasing it. Yeah. It's like, they don't, they don't need, this isn't about me. They don't need to know. But, like, in this moment, I can tell you, like, I'm... I'm like pulling off lids, pulling out old mindsets. I'm like, and, and when I'm, you know, just yelling out in, in the spirit, like the, in tongues, I, I, I was, it's like that strengthening yourself in the Lord. Like this is, right? It's yeah. almost like giving the example of that right in front of them. Yeah. I think often as leaders, more than um, in, in a place like this, in a moment like this, uh, if it's really, if we're really not making it about us, if we're building His kingdom, it's sometimes the Lord just says to me, "Let him watch, <laughs> just let him watch," <laughs> which used to freak me out. I mean, that used to terrify me. Yeah. But there's something about it's better caught than taught. Mm. Some things like this better caught than taught. Yeah. They got to figure it out. They have to. They have to walk with it. They have to like absorb that. It's yeah. not just something you go, okay. And now we're gonna hold our hands on our tummies, and we're all gonna really, we're all gonna do this. There's a time for that. There's a time for like the, the group prophetic act, the the unity of that moment, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we'll do that. But in this moment, it was about like stir up the song inside of you. Yeah. Like there's a bright light inside of you. Stoke it up. Let it get brighter. Let it get brighter. Here's how you, it, it was like you know. Yeah. So that's what that's. I mean, I was just in it, and those were the things that were like coming to me to do. It was like release, like let it out, let it out, let it yeah. out, let it out. It's, oh, I, it's it's so fun to see. It, you know, I think a lot of times we read things that happen in the Bible, you know, and and when you just write about something, or even just yeah. hearing you describe it, yeah. you know, like oh, I had this like utterance, and so I was releasing through the motion of doing my hands, you know. And when it's written, it, it can seem so like grand or so big, you know, yeah. and there's the, I know there's the one story in the Old Testament where the prophet goes to, um, I can't remember who it is, but he tells him to throw down the arrows on the ground, right? Yes. Yeah. And like, and, and then, you know, afterwards the prophet kind of reveals, he's like, if you had thrown the arrows on the ground seven times, you would have won the war, but because you only threw it down, it was either three or five, then you're going to win the battle, but you're not going to win the war and your legacy won't live on, you know, and like reading that, it's like, oh my gosh, like this must have been some like grand, you know, we hear the whole story and the, like this whole thing, when really it's like literally I just walk up to him like, hey, here's some arrows. And you kind of go, oh, cool. Yeah. Throw it on the ground, you pick it up, throw it again, pick it up and throw it again. If they had just done it again. And then, and then it's like, and, and so what I love is that it, it, <laughs> it shows us, one of the things that the story that shows us is there are physical acts mm -hmm. that we can do that may seem super insignificant uh -huh. just to look at it. To just, That's right. That, right. that, grabbing an arrow and throwing it on the ground, it may look just like, what the heck was that? Why are they, what are they doing? Is that really doing anything? All she's doing is making a motion from her gut to the audience. Like, uh, is that really doing anything? Yeah. yeah. And if she would have done it seven times, you all would have won the war. <laughs> if she only did it a few, you're going to win the battle. No, no but, but it, it, it's, that's it's how important it is. It's significant to be so connected that you're not, if we stay connected to him and we recognize the sound of his voice louder than the others, then in those moments, we're not, we're not gonna overthink all the things we're doing. Yep. It's just gonna flow out of us naturally because mm -hmm. we were always meant to be this connected. Worship is connection. Mm -hmm. It was always supposed to be that. Yeah. So if we stay connected, we're not gonna overthink. Is this a thing? Should I be doing this? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should, no. 
you're going to be, you're going to have moments when you're like, what? Okay. This is coming, this is coming out of me right now. Yeah. You know? And, and that's the beauty of it mm-hmm. is that, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You're, you just never know. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. We're getting it. Come on. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, stir up yourself in the Lord right now. Yeah. Family, do it. <laughs> Callie, she's she's a she's doing it. She's, she's a, a waiver too. Yeah, she's a waiver. When you're plugged into heaven, the power's always on. The power's always on. Yeah. And there. There you, you know, it's done. There we go. What I notice about you in both conversation and in leading is, which I think is a, actually a pastoral thing that you have, is you, you're aware of how weird you can be sometimes. Completely. And, you know, even earlier in this conversation, you said, like, I asked for enlightenment, but not, right? Yeah. And you... Got to know who you're talking to. Exactly. You got to know who you're talking to. And even in that moment, I feel like that last little line of when you're plugged into heaven was like, Almost like a like rounded out of like, Wrap hey, exactly. Hey, audience, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that you are the light of the world. So let me teach you real Except quick. Let me life. clarify anything that might feel weird here is yeah. you're plugged in yeah. to heaven. Grounding That's the statements. source of the light. Yeah. And then it's shining from mm-hmm. you. It, I just, I love yeah. that you, it took three seconds to do that. But all of a sudden, if there was anyone that might think like... They're going, oh, the light comes from the inside. You mean it's not... I'm like, well, it is God. It is the Spirit of God inside. It's Christ, the hope of glory in you. But I can feel your concern. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap it up like this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was very intentional. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we're like, and there's the bow. And we're done. There it is. (laughs) You're you're shockingly intentional. Well... Like the things that seem... People don't notice. Or or that that maybe just seem like it comes out of you. I don't need... You know, it's it's so it's your pastoral, so it's very you notice those things, and I I love that. But yes, it was very intentional. Yeah, it's, just, it's so great. I love that you caught We're, that. We we have a few minutes, so okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over to another yeah. moment okay. that's that's just fun, and, and oh. there's there's maybe not as much you know dynamic with it <laughs> as like you know where all the different places that it goes. The journey. The journey. But um, this is this is something that. Um, Happened just a couple months ago at, um, I think it was during a leader's event. Or no, not leader's. I think it was. Is this when Bill had me go back into it? Yeah. So here, you know, we're coming out of uh, Reckless Love. Yes. Which, you know, obviously that song just. Lord. It, it opens the door to. It does. It, it go so many places. And uh, I just love where you go with it. So let's we'll see. So right there, I mean, your love is relentless. Beautiful melody. Uh, did that happen in the moment, or had you like? Uh, not that, that day. Mm-hmm. This is one of those moments where um, I, I mean, at that point, I'd sung that twenty other times mm-hmm. in different sets. The first time, the first time it happened, I mean, I just kept hearing it over and over, mm-hmm. and so I, I like I had to sing it. You know, I, I just kept hearing it. There's something about. Um, yeah, I mean, going from reckless, and that was my, I think I, there, there was power in that, that personal testimony. I think the first time I sang it out, I was like, oh, your love's relentless. I felt it all my life. Mm. I felt it all my life. Like, you always chase me down. We're never really hiding. Yeah. And, um, and so I sang that, and I, I remember going, <laughs> I remember singing it down several times and feeling it, and then all of a sudden I was like, 
oh no, I'm gonna do this. I don't even know if I can hit this. I don't even know if I can hit this. Say yalla! I mean, like I just like jumped up and I'm like, we're doing this. It was yeah. like a not even, like this I'm time on my or way the up. First time? The first time I did uh -huh. it, I was like, okay, this is a screamer. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm doing it, because I just, I felt it. I mostly, I've, I totally felt my way through the first time I sang that, yeah. and it, I mean, it was explosive. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there was, there was something on it. Yeah. And so there as is. long as there was something on it, I'm gonna sing it. Yeah. With, with you, when you did the octave jump in, in this particular time, yeah. the band was right there. Like yeah, I told in. them to be. Okay, so was that, okay. I, I, wanted, I wanted to check on that because. <laughs> the first time I did that, mm -hmm. the first time I sang Your Love is Relentless, I was playing with John Paul. Uh -huh. ah! And I, I literally, that was, this was not planned. And this is, this is the beauty of going into these moments with people who are family, who like know you. Yeah like crazy because I sang that out. The f I jumped up the octave and I mean, he was, I mean, he was on it. And I, I literally looked at him and went, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I literally looked at him and yelled because it was like, he played exactly what. Yeah. It was, it, he was playing prophetically. Yep. And that's the thing, the musician, he was playing prophetically. So in that moment he was locked into, I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was powerful. So I basically, I told this band to be ready to do that. Yeah. Because it was powerful. It was there it was is. something about it. singing a song that that if there's something on it and God keeps breathing on it, you keep singing it. Mm -hmm. You know. So I just I've I've kept singing that. Yeah. And I don't do it every time, but when it feels right, I do yeah. almost every time. It's great. And you know, when it's done, I'll I probably won't sing it anymore. Yeah. You know. Well, and, and and just on a practical level, I love that you told your band beforehand. Hey. Yeah. If I, I sing this, time. Love Relentless, if I jump the octave, come in big right there. I think that's good. Just, you know, we kind of touched on it earlier, the like, you know, spontaneous, spontaneous purists. I think it's good for them to hear like, okay, I can, that way, because it helps even like prevent flops mm -hmm. in a sense of like, that way you're not out on a limb singing this yeah. super high top of range note yeah. in a silent room. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people, I mean, I, I know people in churches that are like learning, like that are hungry to hear what God's saying in a moment. It's, it's easy to glorify the, the spontaneous, but the truth is that it's all powerful. And, but it's really cool. I know, I know a lot of people who are like, we're just practicing this prophetic thing. What we do know is this person, this thing this person did was a prophetic moment. Like God was doing that. So maybe we'll sing that here and yeah. see how it goes to kind of move people. If they're in a congregation that it's not so easy for them to like go off the map, mm -hmm. they could plan this moment that came from another spontaneous moment from somewhere else yeah. and sing it. A lot of people do that. Yeah. To like, to get, to warm people up to it, to kind of pastor them through this, yeah. you know? So I don't know, I think there's power in all of it. Yeah. One time I even just basically repeated verbatim the Kim Walker, how he loves, like preach, you know what she does? Sure. If you never encounter the, I'm like, I'll just say you that. You would know, cause you would never yeah. do the same again. <laughs> I maybe didn't do quite the voice inflection, but yeah. Pretty like, sure a lot of people it. probably did. Yeah. That's great. It's a great way to practice. They're like, oh, great this. Great way to grow in it. It 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 makes sense. Like we can lose people, but if we stay connected to what the Lord's doing, and we just take a take a second, not too much, not too much talky, you know, just take a second to say, oh, this is what's going on, you know. Yep. They'll go with you. They they can connect to that. Let's watch just a just oh. a moment more.
rest is not spontaneous. <laughs> it's written. No, it's not. There's lyrics on the screen. It is know, written. Right? Let it be written. <laughs> Stephanie, any any closing thoughts? Any any final thoughts on this topic before we call it a day? You know, I would just say, if this is something you're hungry for, like in your church, that God is more excited to talk to us than we are to hear him speak. Mm. And he's always wanting to pour himself out. So don't put the pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. Just reach out, just like, and I think we don't have to reach very far because he's here. Mm -hmm. He's right here in this moment. And I think if we just, if we connect and adore him and we practice taking risk, yeah. that he's gonna honor that. He, he, can, he can work with anything, yeah. and he wants to. So just, it shouldn't be stressful. It should feel exciting. Yeah. So good. Seve, on a scale of <laughs> <laughs> one to the universe. Whoa! Where would you rate stars? this whole interview? Stars. <laughs> Did it earn a unicorn rating? Star, oh yeah. I mean, we, we surpassed unicorn. W wow. <laughs> We got past unicorn horn. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you again so much for right coming in today. And, uh, <laughs> Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This has been great. Oh. For those of you watching at home, we, uh, we hope that this was helpful for you, that you learned some <laughs> new things as well as gained some practical tools to help you step into new, new depths, new levels of worship in your church back home. <laughs> you are ridiculous. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time.